How's everybody doing? Good, good. My name is Marcus Ogden. I'm originally right here from Washington, D.C. Born and raised, born and raised. Was born in downtown D.C., Columbia Hospital for Women. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. So from there, I went to uh, Stevens Elementary in downtown D.C., not that far from here. Then went to St. John's College High School, Northwest D.C. Went to Howard University, Northwest D.C. Then I left here to go play in the NFL for the Jacksonville Jaguars. So being here is really important to me because this is where I'm from. But more importantly around de and i I'm going to talk to you about some things in my life. My father actually worked around the corner from here on New York Avenue. 1420 New York Avenue. And you talk about diversity, equity, and inclusion. My dad in the 1970s was hiring African Americans, Caucasians, Asians, Polynesians, any and everybody. If you were straight, if you were gay, my dad didn't care. In 1979, when there was no talk of diversity, he said, whoever works best for me and the company, that's what I'm going to hire. Plain and simple. Plain and simple. So again, I'm so excited to talk about this because my dad, he was my example, my shining star for my entire life to show me what it was to be diversity, to have equity and include all people of all races to do and be their best. Okay? So let's talk about DEI from a leadership perspective. Okay? Great leaders understand in their business that your answer is not always the right answer. Okay? As a leader, you have to be able to have people be diverse, different backgrounds, cultures, experiences, but understand also that as a leader, you're not going to always have the right answer. That's what it's all about. So in our company today, my team is very diverse. I'll talk about that a little bit later on. But again, I know that I'm not going to always be right. And you know what? Great leaders accept people to challenge them and make them understand that's all about the betterment and the alignment of the organization. That's true equity. That's true inclusion. Great quote by Steve Jobs. Steve said his hardest job at Apple was creating an inclusive environment where his trusted team could express themselves without fear of being judged. Okay? You all in this room are the change agents. Change agents say, hey, look, this can be better. This can be more inclusive. This can be more thought. It could be more discussion. It could be more, you know, topics. So that's what it's really about, understanding that and bring that to the table so your people know you're not just talking about DEI, you're actually living it. You know, talking about it and doing it are not the same things. You got to do it. You got to live. It's got to be present in all that you from who you hire to how you treat people to how you engage people. That's the whole process of DEI. Okay? Great leadership. Leadership is supposed to be dedicated to establishing an inclusive environment. If you're not dedicated, if you're not committed, your staff will feel that, they'll see that, and they'll know that you're not truly doing it for their betterment. So you got to be committed throughout the entire process, without a doubt. Okay? Things to look out for. Be conscious. Understand. Be aware. I heard people talking earlier about, hey, can I, can I touch your hair? Mm, you know what I mean? Like, no. And I actually saw that guy in the gym this morning doing his thing, working out. Real good guy, right? But again, be conscious of things, right? I'll be understand that. Be courageous. Like I said, in 1979, my dad was hiring people of all ethnicities, of all cultures, and he had courage in that fact. Understand, being a change agent, it is not easy. It's not. It takes courage. It takes dedication to understand what you're trying to do is better the entire organization. And that means sometimes there's going to be some things you have to go through. If you don't have courage, it's not going to work. Be committed, right? Top 1% professional athlete. I didn't get there by saying, I'm going to go work out sometimes, every once in a while. I was always getting there early, staying late. People at the Jaguars used to always say, we can tell you what time to be at the facility or what time to leave. We can't tell you if you want to get here early, if you want to stay late, if you want to go into the Jaguar community. We can't do that. Only you can. So you got to be actually committed to the cause of diversity, equity, and inclusion, and then collaborate. 
everybody has strength in numbers, right? Having collaborative effort is going to make things so much easier as you're trying to embark down a new road towards a better organization. It's without a doubt. I have a podcast, and it's called Get Authentic with Marcus Ogden. It's called that because as a leader, you have to be authentic. And what's authentic mean? It means when somebody asks you a question, you give your real, raw, honest response. That's authenticity. That's why our podcast is doing so well. Look, you say actions, communications, and it's strategies. It's pretty transparent, right? People are going to follow your actions, right? And then communication creates clarity, and then strategies. When you understand what people need from you, you can give them what they need as a leader, right? That's how I built an eight-figure construction company when I had just turned 30. I didn't know anything about construction. But I built this massive company. Why? I took action, I was communicating, and I had really good strategies that I had with people in my office that were diverse. So again, if you want to be a great change leader around DE&I, you have to. You have to be authentic. If people think you're not being who you are at your core, they will figure it out and they will end up leading your organization. That's exactly why I went bankrupt in 2013 because I lost everything from being a really bad leader. Okay? So, why did I start speaking around this topic? To help people succeed where I failed. Again, I had a lot of success, then I lost it all. But a lot of times around what I did in the business, DE&I has always been the staple piece of how I built success. First time around, I became real egocentric, became an asshole, lost it all, right? So that was my fault. But I built it off of DE&I. This time around, DE&I is present, I'm no longer an asshole. So things are a little bit better, okay? Just being real. Yo, I'm a real kind, I'm authentic. Right? You guys get to learn who I am. There's no fluff here. Okay? Now, let's talk about who I am. Okay? Now, why did my dad pick that tie for himself and me and Jonathan? Not sure. Not sure. I wouldn't have done that. Authentically, bad choice, Dad. That's okay. Okay? We love him anyway. Now, why is he up here? We were raised by a single father. Authenticity, our mother left us on Christmas morning when I was eight years old. Gone. Why did I put this up here? My dad included us in telling us, you know what, guys? Mom's not here right now. It's the three of us, me and the two of you. We're going to get through this, right? He was that guy. He didn't say, Mom, da, da, da. he didn't bash her. He said, you know what? Mom's not here right now. But we are here. We are here, right? So my brother, Tom, was six foot nine in the eighth grade. He was six nine, 375 at 14 years old, at 13 years old, right? So again, talk about diversity and equity and inclusion, right? I remember this. I remember, I'm going to show a hand so I say these names, okay? Who's ever heard of the name Steve Spurrier? Raise a hand. Okay? He was at Florida. Okay? Who's ever heard the name Bobby Bowden? He was at uh, Florida State. Who's ever heard the name Lou Holtz? He was at Notre Dame. Who's ever heard the name George Welsh? He was at Virginia. And then who's ever heard the name Terry Donahue? He was at UCLA. Terry Donahue came to my dad and said, hey, I want to include you in the process of why I want Jonathan. I'm going to make him a better man a better person, educated, and a great football player. He was the only one time I actually told my dad why Jonathan should go from D.C. to L.A. And that won my dad over. And that picture is from Jonathan's high school graduation. Now let's talk about diversity, okay, and a champion. My dad went to Howard as well, shameless plug, so did I. It was great, right? So then he from there went to Maryland, got his master's in economics, okay, my dad would work for the Federal Home Loans Bank of New York in their D.C. office 
on New York Avenue in the late 70s, 1979. He got the bank manager position. He was running their entire trade room, QCIP numbers, stocks, bonds. He was running it. Our father hired people that fit the mold of working together for inclusion, for equity and diversity. Again, African-American males, females, white males, females, Asian males, females, Middle Eastern, people who were straight, people who were gay. My dad, I remember somebody said to my dad, you know, Cheryl, you got somebody working with you, they're, you, they're gay, right? Like, yeah, they are, okay? What does that matter to you? Well, how's it working with that person? That's gotta be hard, right? He's like, actually, it's phenomenal. They're our best person. They bring unity, they bring togetherness, and people love him. Why do you care? Why do you give a damn? And the guy said, oh, I don't mean, because my dad was six foot four, about 450 at the time, and they asked him that question, by the way. So they're like, well, he's like, well, sure, just calm down. Calm like, no, 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 I'm not going to calm down because that's my team, right? My dad said, I remember him telling this, Marcus, in life, hire who is best for the job, period. Don't wait. Don't wait for an initiative. Don't wait for somebody to say, oh, maybe you should do it. No, no, if you think they're the best, hire them. And that's why he, to me, was my champ, because he was doing this in 79 when they weren't even talking about it. There was no DEI initiatives. It's like, no, he said, boom. Like I tell people, don't talk about it. Just do it, like Nike. Just do it. You know what I mean? So from there, our university, I learned a lot. Then from there, I was drafted to the National Football League. Okay. I played for the Jaguars, Ravens, Bills, Titans. Jack Del Rio told me, he's going to tell you all the exact same thing Jack told me. I was a 22-year-old rookie. In life, if you want to be successful, be your own CEO. Be your own chief executive officer. Be a self-inspired, self-starting person. Right? You all in this room. You know right from wrong. You know who needs to work for you, who doesn't. You're here to get better. Be your own CEO. Be your own self-inspired starter. Jack was a rookie head coach at that time. And he came to say, hey guys, we're together on this. Let's go to work. And that led me to understand that in life and in sports, that's the thing I love about sports. In sports, it's true diversity. Sometimes it's equitable, sometimes eh, here, there, but there's always inclusion, right? What I love about sports is that at the end of the day, if you can play, you're going to play. Plain and simple, right? If you can play, you're going to play. In the military, you're black, you're white, you got my back, I got yours. I got your six, you got mine, right? That's the way it should, that's what corporate America needs to be like. It needs to be more like, Who's ever's best plays. If you're not, you don't play. In the military, I got your back, you got mine. Let's go get it done. So the NFL taught me a lot about diversity, how to come together. Brian Billick was the same way. Jeff Fisher was the same way. Mike Milwaukee was the same way. And I learned the NFL was all about is getting the job done. It's that simple. So in your businesses, in your work, bring to the table who's best and have an attitude that, you know what, if we can be aligned around a shared vision, we can move together. And there's three things you can tell people. Have focus, lock in, and attack. So focus is an internal cleansing of your mind to push out negativity, imposter syndrome, and move towards a better unified company. A lot of times people focus on too many things, therefore nothing gets done. So focus, lock in, either create a visual target or write it down. Okay, I'm recently divorced. My lock in target was November 1st of 2023, I want to have a new home. That was November 1, 2022, when I set that, when I, that I locked in. I bought my home five and a half months ahead of schedule, right? Because I locked in. I said, you know what? I know what I got to do. Go do it. And then attack. Move forward every single day towards your target. It's an inch 
if it's a yard, if it's a mile, it doesn't make a difference. Just keep going. That is the key to creating a healthy, diverse, inclusive, and equitable environment. Okay? So after the NFL, I struggled immensely with what to do next. I got hooked on nightlife, gambling, all these things bad. And what I realized at the time, I didn't have a plan. I didn't have a strategy. I didn't know what to do next. And so what I did after that is I found my business partner and we started a company called Caden Premier Enterprises. We start off as a small concrete contractor in downtown Baltimore, very small. One of my mentors went out of business. It opened up the Red Sea for us. And what we did, we looked at people that worked for him and other people around Baltimore, and we went after the best talent that we could. So again, my first hire was a guy that was from, you know, he was Native American, right? Then I hired people that were Caucasian. Then I hired people that were Hispanic, then African American, then women. Like, I hired everybody. It didn't matter to me who you were, your ethnic background, your, your culture. It didn't matter to me. I hired who was best for the job. Two years later, we became the largest African-American subcontractor in the city of Baltimore and the state of Maryland for two years. We became the site work kings of Baltimore. We were minority certified. We were diverse. We were loving life. Things were going phenomenal. But unfortunately, as the company grew, right, my ego grew. One of the biggest killers of equity and inclusive environment is your ego. It's your ego. I have an acronym for ego. Exaggerated, glorified opinions. Okay? Exaggerated, glorified opinions. So for me, my ego took over. I, have, I live by this quote. If your ego gets bigger than the good part of your soul, you are screwed in life. You're screwed. Because we all have an ego. It's in our DNA. But if your ego gets bigger than your character, than your humbleness, than how you treat people, it will tear you down. It's not a question. It will tear you down. So for me, what happened was, as the company grew, my ego got bigger and bigger and bigger. And no longer was I including people, no longer was I having conversations with people. It was either my way or the highway. I was diverse, and I didn't, but I didn't have any equity, and there was no inclusion, zero. So what happened? My best people started to leave the organization. They said, Marcia, you're not gonna listen to me? And why am I here? Ladies and gentlemen, if you don't allow your people to share their thoughts in a very safe way, in a respectful environment, they will get frustrated. And if they stop talking to you, what does that mean? They're talking to another business about leaving yours. Does that make sense? Like, they're not talking to you, they're talking to somebody. So as I lost everything, my best employees started to leave the organization. I don't blame them. I didn't listen to them. I didn't have any type of open door policy. They got tired of it. They moved on. So from there, I lost everything, right? So in 2013, my home got foreclosed on. Both cars got repossessed in the same day. Moved to, I had $400 to my name. That's it, that's all I had left. No credit cards, no family, no friends, zero. And what happened to me? I realized that there was no accountability and no responsibility in my life. If you want to change your company's culture, be more diverse, more equitable, more inclusive, you got to be accountable. You got to be accountable. And what is that? It's an internal promise that you make to yourself to do as necessary, right? Responsible. You have to be responsible to the people that you are serving, right? If you're not accountable to yourself, it's impossible to be responsible to anybody else. If you're not accountable to yourself, you cannot be responsible to anybody else. 
So what happened is I ended up losing everything. But I didn't realize what the problem was. So what happened? Came to Raleigh. I worked at Millens for a short time. Fired. All my fault. Got a job the next day to a construction company. Fired from that job. The only job I could get was a custodian making $8.25 an hour working from 10 p.m. till 5 a.m. Right? And you think I would have learned. No. Still didn't learn. Right? And what happened is I, it, I had to hit complete. I had, I had to hit complete rock bottom. Now, my clients, I tell them, look, learn from me. Be smarter than me. Don't go as far now as I went. But I had to hit rock bottom. Okay? One of my favorite people in the world is J.K. Rollins. She wrote Harry Potter. She said she wrote Harry Potter in her car. And her quote, rock bottom, is the moment that she rebuilt her life. That's her quote. And for me, I had to hit rock bottom when sometimes you got to go that route. As a custodian, somebody spoiled milk, nasty, stinking garbage over my body, my skin, and my clothes. And that for me was my rock bottom. I say, hey, Marcus, if you don't change, you're always going to be here. And I also realized that I did not have an inclusive way of treating people and losing my best people cost me to lose everything. Ladies and gentlemen, you cannot do everything by yourself. I don't care how great you are at your job. You can't. The human mind can do a lot of things, but it can't do everything. You need people. You need experts. You need a team to help you scale and grow. So that's where I messed up. I didn't have that, and I lost that. So as a result of that, I said, okay, Marks, what do I do well? So I went home, wrote down my three biggest strengths. I said, okay, I'm a good speaker. I'm a good communicator. I want to help people. Launched my speaking business. Took me a long time, about two and a half years to get my first paid job. Got it. And now we work for a lot of corporations. But why is that up there? I don't do it by myself. I have an amazing team around me of people that are diverse, that I treat with equity and we're very inclusive. My business partner is a white female in her mid 40s. My website guy is a Lebanese gentleman in his late 30s. African American works to me with trademark and patents. I have a half Honduran, half uh, Venezuelan virtual assistant who's in her early 20s, right? My social media team, all female in their mid to late 20s, right? I'm not just up here telling you about be diverse and be equitable just so I can talk to you about it. I'm doing it. I'm living it. And as a result of doing it and living it, things for our business are skyrocketing. And why is that? Because I can talk to people from different groups, different backgrounds, different experiences, and get what? Their thoughts, their information, their input. That's the true essence of diversity. People coming together from different backgrounds to solve a common problem. That's the essence of diversity. So what you have to do is you have to be able to bring people in and allow them to share their information. Otherwise, why are they there? Why are you paying them? If you're not going to listen to your team, you're wasting your payroll. If you're not going to listen to your team, you're wasting your payroll. Don't do that. Again, so as a result, so now we speak. I author, I coach, I consult. Our, po our podcast is the true essence of diversity, equity, and inclusion. I interview any and everybody on that show. Famous people, athletes, men, women, gay, straight, I interview any and everybody. And because it's authentic and because we have real conversations with people, allow them to speak their mind, speak their thoughts, and we have really courageous, sometimes tough conversations, people love it. And it's inspired. It's nothing negative. Never anything negative. But people love that. So our podcast is in the top 1% in the world most popular, and we got there in seven and a half months. So many people have been trying to do this for a while, can't figure it out. I mean, look, Take the approach. Get people that are different. Don't get the same type of guests. 
Don't have all white male. Don't have all African-American male. Don't have all female. Don't do that. Be diverse. Why? Because the world is diverse. The world's diverse, ladies and gentlemen. Look at this audience. People are white, female, different cultures, experiences, different minorities. Great. That's the world. And if you can't see that through your lens, if you can't understand that authenticity, diversity, vulnerability are going to make your company grow, you're going to open your eyes quickly. Because again, the world is fast paced changing. And that's why I'm so blessed to have a great team. Because without them, I'm nothing. Without them, I'm nothing. So again, it's so important to bring that to the table. Okay? Now, are you ready to actually be more diverse in your approach? Right? Are you ready to actually do that and make a change, make a difference? Okay? Here are a couple things that are gonna help you. Okay? The leaders must lead by example. Again, if I'm up here telling you about diversity, equity, and inclusion, I have an all African American team, or an all uh, female team, or an all you know, uh, Caucasian team, it's not diversity. It's not, that's not inclusion. That's not equity. It's me saying, hmm, I want to work with one type of person, whether I know or like. And here's the catch. Great leaders are really good at getting out of their comfort zone and trying to connect with people that don't look like them. Okay? Connect with people that don't look like you. In the NFL as a rookie, I had white team. I, them, I mean, we had guys that were like, Talk about straight loggers from like Virginia, like the back mountains. Dudes where I had their like their um, their big monster trucks, they had the CB4 rails coming to camp. Like, hey, it's this Chris Luzar from uh, Virginia coming. I'm like, yeah, what up, Chris? Like, that's what it was, right? But we all had a same a common alignment. We wanted to win, right? I didn't care if Chris was from the back country and talked like a logger. I didn't care. I didn't care that Mark Bunnell is, you know, I, I our all right, Jack Del Rio, most people think he is white. He's not white. He's not white. He is half Caucasian. He's half Mexican. I mean, he looked blonde hair, blood. He looked like the whitest day. He looked like day, white as a cloud in a, on a sunny day. But he's not. He's not white. And he recognized that. You know what I mean? The coach from the Dolphins. He's not all white, he is mixed. He's half white, he's half black. Right? Why I tell this? Because at the end of the day, ladies and gentlemen, it's not about what you look like. Somebody may look away and not be away. So treat everybody the same. You know what I'm saying? Treat everybody the same. And recognize great leaders are gonna step out of their comfort zone and make people feel connected, make people feel valued. When you do that as a leader, that's when great things happen, okay? So, individualizing, identify strengths, be inspired, be consistent, okay? Be consistent, okay? If you do something a certain way, do it that way, right? Don't say, well, I'm going to be diverse day one, day two, I'm going to go to that this way, day three, I'm going to go to do this way. No. Be consistent. Your people want to have some sort of routine, some sort of like, I know exactly who you are. I know exactly how you're gonna how you're gonna treat me. Right? People who are looking to be led want a structure to follow. Why do you all think so many athletes when they get out of in the NFL, I guess before anything else, struggle with making keeping their money? They got no structure know what to do with their time, right? They don't know how to move, plan. I tell everybody, I said, me, when I, now, I live by the calendar on my phone, right? And I meet with people, I do things. Inclusive is all about creating a, a way people can have some sort of structure that's fair, that's equitable to all. To all. But people need that. So again, off this slide, be consistent and also be inspiring. Ladies and gentlemen, vulnerability, 
is sharing your real, honest truth, raw personality of who you are when nobody asks you the question. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm getting divorced. It's what it is. I tell you all the time. And some people say, Marcus, wow, so am I. They don't ask me that. Now I don't get into all the details. But I share who I am and I'm vulnerable. And people, what? They connect with that. That's equity. That's inclusive. When people say, you know what, Marcus? I feel where you're at. I know what you're going through. People need to know that you're not just trying to make them work for transactional business environments. That's also part of equity, bringing people together to make them feel there's not just a work-related process. So be inspiring. Share your story. People need to hear that from you. You don't get all into the details, but share about who are you, what have you been through, what if you're having a tough time. It connects with people, and they need that in the structure. They need to feel connected to you to want to actually work with you. Will work for you. Where's Kevin at from Guardian? Guardian, right there, man. One of my good clients, okay? One of my good friends met on, through LinkedIn introduced me to Kevin, right? We connected. We had a conversation about coming to work for his company. He said, Marcus, I have a very diverse group. People have been there for 30 years. I've been there for a year. Women, men, all, all across the board. But what I did, right, Kevin? I connected with him through who I am. And I asked him the question, what does your team need to hear to get better? The client needs to feel that what you're, or the team needs to feel that what they need or what you want, they want you to do, you've got to bring it to the table. You've got to bring it to the table. So Kevin's now a really good friend of mine. We're building a great relationship. And at the end of the day, it started because I was like, hey, Kevin, tell me what you need from me. How can that, how can that be? How can I help you? And that made a huge difference in how we now have done business together and we're building a friendship together. That's, so be inspiring, okay? Don't be afraid to share who you are, okay? Leadership sets the tone. Ladies and gentlemen, you have to set the tone of the organization. What I call that culture that you cannot see, but it's always there, okay? Staff development. Your staff needs to know that you are truly behind them getting better at their job. Great, a great equation by Jack Canfield. E plus R equals O. Event plus response determines your outcome. Okay? Think about this. The event, new job new challenge, solve, trying to solve a problem, trying to grow for your organization, some sort of getting a new client, going to a golf event, wherever the case may be. That's the event. That is the opportunity. How you respond is going to determine how your staff has the right outcome. You, your, your response is all three things, your behavior, your thoughts, and your images. Behavior. How you conduct yourself in the business setting. Are you upbeat? Are you standing tall? Are you very excited? Do you have a good demeanor? Do you look the part? Behavior is what we can control and how we either are proactive with it or we have to respond to something. So always maintain good professional behavior. Your thoughts. Most people that work for you, that don't look like you, if they don't know that you're somebody that actually can connect with them, there's going to be a disconnect always. Always. And most people who have negative thoughts around if they can connect with you, imposter syndrome and this negative self-talk eats away at their mind. So how can you help make a difference? Be inspiring. Be authentic. Be vulnerable. Let them know, hey, I know what's going on with you. Let me connect with you on a deeper level. That's true diversity. That's true inclusion. Getting out of the box makes my feel that they know they can what? Count on you. You as the leader have to make the effort. It's consistent. 
like Chris talked about earlier, you know, being, you know, in this whole process of being an African American, being a black, that's what he can respond to. So can I. Let me tell you something, ladies and gentlemen. Working for 53 Fortune 500 brands as an African American speaker that doesn't look like everybody else, it ain't easy. What do I do? I work. Right? I know how to what? Connect with people. People know that I'm a good person through how I break out of my comfort zone to actually make them feel that I'm not this big ogre giant. You know, that they can't come and talk to. I don't, I don't have the stone on my face. You know what I'm saying? The guy's like, well, I'm an angry black man. Well, that ain't me. That's fine. You want to be him? That's cool. But I can't do that in my size. It doesn't work for me. For most people of my size, of any race. Okay? It just doesn't work. All right? So again, and then the third thing is just the images. Help your staff see to whatever they want for why they are working with you. Help them to crystallize an image in their mind of what they need to do. When people can actually see it and can go after it, they work that much harder. Okay? And then recruiting and hiring. I'm going to challenge everybody in this room. At this event today, talk to somebody that doesn't look like you. I don't just mean to say hi and bye. Have a real conversation with somebody. Right? I was sitting there talking to Tom. We were talking about, you know, just shooting the crap, man. What do I know about Tom now? His son was six foot one, 305 pound guard from LA. He was all sitting in LA. What do I know about him? He was interested in going to Boise, didn't work out, which is fine. Went D3, right? What do I know about Tom? He's from Malibu, grew up in a 1,200 square foot house, right? What do I learned about him? He loves Terry Donahue. Good choice, Tom. You know, right? Ladies and gentlemen, I picked up all that in a short 10 minute conversation, right? That's what we talk about. That's inclusive. People want to know that actually what you're, what, what you're saying or what they are saying, you actually can connect with them and vibe with them, right? That's what it's all about. So again, when you look into hire and recruit, go out and talk to, oh, great story that Tom told me about how John Wooten Went from L.A. to Power, New York, to get Lou Al Cinder as his center. Right? That's recruiting. Wooten don't look like Lou Al Cinder to me. They don't anything alike, do they? But it worked. Right? That's what I'm talking about. If you want somebody, make them feel that you want them. Go to them. Talk to them. Connect with them. Get out of your comfort zone and say, hey, here I am. How can we work together? That's what people care about. If you don't look like me, I want to know how can we help each other. When you're looking to recruit, look for people that don't look like you. Go to areas. And again, but like I said, hire who is good for your company as well. Because that's important. Okay? Commitment and accountability. Again, if you're not committed to making the world a better place through your company, it will come across in the light, plain and simple. And then accountability, it's ownership. It's ownership. Most people don't want to own the company culture. They say, oh, it's not my fault. I can't do this. I can't do that. Well, you know what? what, what don't tell me what you can't do. What, what can you do? Why don't we start there, right? Don't look for an excuse. Look for a solution. Talking to Joe earlier today about, hey, I'll be in the gym at 6 o'clock morning. Was the gym the best in that? No. It wasn't the best. It was not bad, but it wasn't what I'm used to. Two choices. I can either say, you know what? This gym sucks. I'm going to go back up to my room and sleep another hour and then go do this place. Or say, you know what? Get it done. Don't make excuses. Ladies and gentlemen, when you run a business or you're trying to grow a business, don't make excuses. Just don't do it. Find ways to get it done. That's what it's all about. And people that you work with want to know it's no excuses. It's just results. That's diversity. That's equity. That's inclusion. No games, no fluff, no muss. Okay? Representation. Get people from different walks of life to sit at your table. Right? I tell people all the time, you are welcome to my table. The question I have for you, are you actually going to pull the chair out, sit down, pull the chair up, 
and do business? I can't answer that, right? I give everybody who's qualified the opportunity to sit at our table, period. That's how we went from a struggling speaker to where we're at now. It took 10 years, but we have that type of representation. Like I tell you before, white, female, uh, El Salvadorian, you know, Honduran, uh, Lebanese, uh, you know, all these different 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, Jewish people. We have representation in our organization. What does that give me? The ability to solve problems very quickly and efficiently. Why? I can go to people on my team and get different perspectives of how to attack common problems. Plain and simple. So representation is a huge, huge factor in life, okay? Now, in times of extreme darkness, focus on the light. One of my favorite quotes by one of my favorite people, okay? What Aristotle meant, I believe, okay, was that in life, you are the light. Ladies and gentlemen, you are the light in this room that's going to make a change in your organization. Nobody else. You're the light. Don't wait for anybody to come do it for you. Do it for yourself. Right? If you want something bad enough, go get it done. Right? People say, oh, Marcus, why don't you stay a football coach and why don't you, you know, work here in a in little town and get free Waffle House for life and get free gas? And I'm like, first of all, I don't want to be fat all day. One. Two, I don't want to just be. Now that's just funny. I, I actually live in the country and I love it. I don't just want to be there where I'm locked into something I don't want to be in. Right? My story was the light to help others out of their darkness. You are the light that's going to make a change in your organization. Nobody else. Nobody else is going to do it for you. Right? Be courageous. Be inspiring. Be committed. Be disciplined. Right? That's what it is. That is how Aristotle became famous. He coached Alexander the Great. He taught Alexander how to be diverse, how to include others, and always be equitable. That's what he did. Alexander became the greatest warrior of ancient history. You all are your own general and women generals. Women and men generals. We all can run the table. Okay? You have to be the light to push out the darkness. You make a change about DE&I, don't talk about it, don't address it, don't have a meeting about it. Just go do it. Just go do it. Thank you.